The Devonian period, often referred to as the Age of Fishes, was a pivotal epoch in the evolution of life on Earth. It was a time of astounding transformation when life transitioned from water to land and the first forests began to rise. The Devonian period occurred from 419.2 million to 358.9 million years ago. During the Devonian, two major animal groups colonized the land. The first tetrapods, land-living vertebrates, appeared during the Devonian, as did the first terrestrial arthropods, including wingless insects and the earliest arachnids. In the oceans, brachiopods flourished. Crinoids, echinoderms and ammonites were also common. When you think about human evolution, there is a good chance you are imagining chimpanzees exploring ancient forests or early humans dubbing woolly mammoths onto cave walls. But we humans, along with bears, lizards, hummingbirds, and Tyrannosaurus rex are actually lobed finned fish. It might sound bizarre, but the evidence is in our genes, anatomy, and in fossils. We belong to a group of animals called land-dwelling sarcopterygians, but vast amounts of evolutionary changes have obscured our appearance. We think of fish as expert swimmers, but in fact they have evolved the ability to walk at least five times. Some species pulled themselves forward using well-developed forefins, while others walk along the ocean floor. Our sarcopterygian ancestor evolved lungs and other air-breathing mechanisms, bony limbs and a stronger spinal column before venturing onto land. Tiktaalik is an ancient extinct genus of lobe-finned fish. Tiktaalik rosea lived approximately 375 million years ago during the late Devonian period. It featured a distinctive flat, triangular-shaped head and sturdy fin bones that allowed it to prop itself up out of the water. Due to its mix of aquatic and terrestrial traits, scientists see Tiktaalik as an evolutionary link between fish and four-legged vertebrates. According to fossil records, Tiktaalik measured between 4.1 and 9 feet long. It possessed a flat, triangle-shaped skull like the head of a crocodile. The back of the skull featured notches that likely contained spiracles for breathing air. These notches indicate that Tiktaalik had both lungs and gills. Unlike other fish, Tiktaalik lacked bony plates in the gill area. This meant it had a neck that allowed it to move its head freely and hunt effectively on land or in shallow water. The diet of Tiktaalik remains unknown due to a lack of stomach contents found in fossils. Most likely, Tiktaalik ate an omnivorous diet consisting of both plants and animals. Given its size, Tiktaalik probably preyed on smaller aquatic organisms such as fish. Also, it could have preyed on small semi-terrestrial tetrapods that lived in shallow water or on land. To date, experts do not know for sure when Tiktaalik went extinct. That said, it most likely died out sometime near the end of the late Devonian period, around 360 million years ago. Around that time, a mass extinction occurred, known as the Hangenberg event. Also known as the end Devonian extinction, this event occurred at the end of the Fermanian stage of the late Devonian period and signaled the start of the Carboniferous period. Sterechiansis is an extinct genus of shark-like holocephalians that lived from the late Devonian period to the late Carboniferous period 383 to 299 million years ago. Fossils of this animal have been found in Asia, Russia, North America, and Europe. Sterechiansis had different sizes depending on species. Sterechiansis altonensis had length about 1.5 meters, 4.9 feet, while Stedekansis productus reached 3 meters, 9.8 feet. In Stedekansis, males had the characteristic anvil dorsal fin, while females had a more typical shark-like dorsal fin. The function of the male's unique fin is not entirely clear, but it is believed to have played a role in mating rituals or social interactions. Researchers believe Stedekansis was a slow swimmer, as its oversized dorsal fin likely prevented it from being able to reach high speeds in the water. Its teeth were fairly small in comparison to other predatory fish of the period, meaning that it may have been a bottom dweller that fed on crustaceans and smaller bottom-feeding fish. Stedekansis, like modern sharks, likely had tough, scale-like dermal denticles covering its skin. These denticles provided protection and reduced water resistance during swimming. 
Fossils of stereocanses have been found alongside those of other ancient marine life, allowing paleontologists to reconstruct the complex ecosystems of the late Devonian period. These fossils provide a window into Earth's prehistoric past and how species interacted and evolved over millions of years. The bony fish Dunkelosteus terrelli, nicknamed Dunk, was one of the many super predators that prowled the oceans during the Devonian period 490 million to 358 million years ago. These massive armored fish, which prowled the oceans that once covered modern day Ohio, had blade like jaws that could snap shut with 8,000 pounds, 3,600 kilograms of force. The first Dunkelosteus terrelli fossils were discovered 150 years ago, along with the shores of Lake Erie near the city of Cleveland, and the largest known specimen resides in the collection of the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Unlike modern fish, which either have skeletons of cartilage or bone, Dunkelosteus terrelli had a bony armored skull attached to a skeleton of cartilage, and the skull of Dunkelosteus was terrifying at nearly 3 feet 85 centimeters tall. Recent attempts to reconstruct this animal by comparing it with modern pelagic sharks in similar ecological niches turned up a massive estimate of 28.8 feet and a weight of about 4.4 tons, 8,800 pounds for the largest species. But after doing in-depth research on the size of Dunkelosteus terrelli, Russell Engelman, a doctoral student at Case Western University in Cleveland, came to the conclusion that it was likely no longer than 13 feet 4 meters. They are thought to live close to the bottom of the ocean. However, there are speculations that members of this genus tend to change habitat with age. Younger Dunkelosteus probably lived in shallow water, while the adults ventured deep into the ocean. As seen with many modern sharks, Dunkelosteus may have experienced internalized egg fertilization. Evidence found in other placoderms, including what looked like an umbilical cord, suggests that they were viviparous. Dunkelosteus was the apex predator in its native ecosystem and is considered among the first true apex predators on Earth. Thus, the chance of them being threatened or preyed on by other animals were low. A series of mass extinction events at the end of the Devonian period wiped out most of the animals existing at the time, including the Dunkelosteus and other placoderms. Although they quickly diversified into several species after first appearing in the Devonian period, their existence lasted only a short time. The oxygen-depleted environment of the late Devonian was more favorable for smaller-sized animals compared to giant fishes like the Dunkelosteus. Before T-Rex, there was B-Rex, a giant armored fish that was king long before the dinosaurs. Bothriel lapis rex is a giant in the group Antiarchi, ancient fish with armored plates covering their head, shoulders and front fins. The new rex, Latin for king, was identified from 370 million year old fossils that were first discovered in 2000 near Oxa Bay in Nunavut, Canada. Scientists estimated that the largest species of B. rex was about 5.5 feet long, 1.7 meters, making it 30% longer than the previous king of the Antiarchs. B. rex would have lived along ancient ocean floors during the Devonian period, a time predating most dinosaurs by hundreds of millions of years. Armor-like plates along B. rex's head and upper body were likely used to defend the creatures from the stabbing bites of large sarcopterygians. The skull also indicates a bottom-feeding lifestyle, as the mouth is on the lower surface of the ancient fish's head. In fact, the heavy armored bones could have also solved buoyancy issues for the bottom-dwelling fish. The diet of Bothriol lepis likely consisted of small invertebrates and plant material. Its jaw structure suggests that it used the suction-feeding method to capture prey. Bothriol lepis became extinct during the early Devonian period, possibly due to changes in its environment or competition with other fish species. Its extinction is part of a large event known as the Late Devonian Extinction, which affected many marine organisms. The state of New York has a pretty amazing fossil. It's Eurypterus remyps, also known as the giant sea scorpion. They existed over 400 million years ago and thrived in warm, shallow marine environments in the Middle and Late Paleozoic. 
This extinct relative of the modern king crab was adopted as the state fossil in 1984. On average, members of this genus measure 13 to 20 centimeters, 5 to 9 inches in length. However, much larger specimens have been discovered. The largest specimen of Eurypterus on record measured 1.3 meters, 4.3 feet in length. Its body is generally divided into two parts. The prosoma, the forward part of their body, consisted of six segments. The head and thorax are fused into segments. The second part, called the opistosoma, formed its abdomen. It consisted of 12 segments with fused upper and lower plates. The Eurypterus also had a tail-like appendage called a telson. They had six pairs of appendages. The first pair modified into pincers that resembled that of a scorpion. They used these pincers to get food into their mouth. The remaining appendages is used for motion, with the last pair modified into flat paddle-like limbs which they use for swimming. Scientists believe they were both predators and scavengers. They were capable of hunting small, soft-bodied invertebrates such as worms. They most likely used the row of spines on the pincer-like appendages to hold and kill prey before ripping them into small pieces that they could swallow. Fossils of the Eurypterus were often found in congregations. These suggest that they most likely gathered together during periods of mating and molting. Juveniles most likely lived in near-shore environments where they were safe from predators. As they grew older and bigger, they would be able to venture into deeper waters. Based on an examination of the respiratory system of the Eurypterus, experts believe that this arthropod was probably among the first organisms to venture out of the water. Their respiratory system is adapted to breathing air on land for a short period. Titanictius roamed the seas and oceans during the Devonian period 380 million years ago. Titanictius has long been known as one of the largest animals of the Devonian period, with a length likely exceeding 5 meters, as well as a lower jaw reaching length of more than 1 meter, similar to the basking shark. While the lower jaw of Dunkelosteus and many of its relatives have strong fangs and crushing plates, the lower jaw of Titanictius is narrow, toothless and without sharp edges suitable for cutting. In addition, it was unable to close its mouth completely. Titanictius is therefore presumed to have been a suspension feeder, feeding on minute plankton by swimming slowly through water with its mouth open wide to capture high concentration of plankton. The analysis comparing the distribution of stress across the jaws showed similar patterns in Titanictius and the basking shark, corroborating similarities in their feeding behavior. The jaw features of Titanictius resemble those of other suspension feeders, such as the baleen whale, whale shark or, as already mentioned, the basking shark. The exact cause of its extinction remains speculative, but changing environmental conditions, competition with other species, and evolving predator-prey dynamics likely contributed to its decline. Xenacanses are a prehistoric genus of sharks that went extinct at the end of the Triassic period about 202 million years ago. They were widely distributed and lived from the Devonian to the end of the Triassic period. The name Xenacanses is a Greek word that means foreign spine. Very few complete fossils have been found, and most information about the animal has been found through teeth and spine samples. They were about 3 to 5 feet long, with a maximum length of 6 feet. They had a long dorsal fin that extended down their backs and tails before merging with the anal fin. They looked more like modern-day eels than sharks, and they also believed to have a similar swimming style to kangaroo eels. In addition, the Xenacanses had a sizable dorsal spine that extended from behind its head. The spine extended outwards and could at times be as long as one foot long. Unlike most fish and sharks that have cartilage in their backs, the spine was formed from bone. This spine grew with annulated rings around it, which scientists have used to calculate the animal's age. The spines of the female Xenacanses were longer than the males, and it is believed the spines contained venom, which is used as a defense mechanism. They had unique V-shaped teeth, allowing them to feed on small crustaceans and other fish. The Xenacanses was an apex predator in freshwater bodies, meaning they were at the top of the food chain but they were sometimes preyed on by Dimetrodon, a synapsid that lived in the Permian era, and the Rutiodon, a crocodile-like predator that lived during the Triassic period. 
There were over 21 species of this genus that lived all over the world, and fossils were found in distinct areas. It must be noted, however, that all different species of Xenocanthus did not live during the same time period. The different species lived at different periods during the time that the genus existed. The Xenocanthus was one of the few genera that survived the mass extinction event of the Permian period that wiped out 70% of the world's population and 96% of all marine life. However, at the end of the Triassic period, another mass extinction event occurred on Earth. Unfortunately, the resilient genus of Xenocanthus could not survive this event and went extinct along with the majority of other species. Drepanaspis is an extinct genus of jawless fish that lived during the Silurian and Devonian periods around 443 to 490 million years ago. Drepanaspis had a unique armor-plated appearance with its body covered in bony plates or scales. These protective plates served as a defense against predators and may have also helped regulate buoyancy in the water. The body of Drepanaspis was flattened from top to bottom, giving it a disc-like or leaf-like shape. This body shape is typical of many heterostracans and allowed them to glide or swim close to the seabed. While the exact feeding habits of Drepanaspis are not entirely clear, some researchers believe that they were filter feeders. Their flattened body and peculiar mouth parts suggest they might have used a filtering mechanism to capture small organisms and organic particles from the water column. Like their close heterostracan relatives, members of Drepanaspis have a sensory canal system specifically called the lateral line sensory system. These sensory organs, when found in extant species of fish, are tubes and canals rich in neuromasts shown to be important in detecting changes in water pressure and movement along with influencing some of their behavioral patterns. Drepanaspis and many other heterostracan jawless fish eventually became extinct by the end of the Devonian period. This extinction event likely resulted from changing environmental conditions and competition with evolving jawed fish. Because many crinoids resemble flowers with their cluster of waving arms atop a long stem, they are sometimes called sea lilies. But crinoids are not plants. Like their relatives, starfish, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and brittle stars, crinoids are echinoderms, animals with rough spiny surfaces and a special kind of radial symmetry. Crinoids have lived in the world's oceans since at least the beginning of the Ordovician period, roughly 485 million years ago. They may be even older. Some paleontologists think that a fossil called Ecmatocrinus from the famous Burgess Shale fossil site in British Columbia may be the earliest crinoid. The Burgess Shale fossils date to the Middle Cambrian, well over 500 million years ago. Either way, crinoids have had a long and successful history on Earth. Crinoids flourished during the Paleozoic era, carpeting the seafloor like a dense thicket of strange flowers swaying this way and that with the ocean currents. They peaked during the Mississippian subperiod when the shallow marine environments they preferred were widespread on several continents. Massive limestones in North America and Europe made up almost entirely of crinoid fragments attest to the abundance of these creatures during the Mississippian. Plants, which had begun colonizing the land during the Silurian period, continued to make evolutionary progress during the Devonian. Lycophytes, horsetails, and ferns grew to large sizes and formed Earth's first forests. By the end of the Devonian, progymnosperms, such as Archaeopteris, were the first successful trees. Archaeopteris could grow up to 98 feet, 30 meters tall with a trunk diameter of more than 3 feet 1 meter. It had a softwood trunk similar to modern conifers that grew in sequential rings. It did not have true leaves, but fern-like structures connected directly to the branches, lacking the stems of true leaves. There is evidence that they were deciduous, as the most common fossils are shed branches. Reproduction was by male and female spores that are accepted as being the precursors to seed-bearing plants. By the end of the Devonian period, the proliferation of plants increased oxygen content of the atmosphere considerably, which was important for development of terrestrial animals. At the same time, carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, was depleted from earlier levels. This may have contributed to the cooling climate and the extinction event at the end of the Devonian period. 